What's up, everyone? I'm James Young with jamesyoungphotography.com, and I'm bringing you episode number 11 of Teach Me How to Lightroom. Today, we're taking this portrait I took at a wedding, and we're going to give it a film-like look, almost like a Pinteresty type of edit. We're muting blacks today, and we're going to give it some grain. This is where we started, and this is where we end up. Don't forget, there's a download link in the description for the raw file below, so you can follow along if you'd like, or even better, you can make your own edit. Maybe you see this image and you want to take it in a completely different direction. I'd love to see what you come up with. Post it on social media. Make sure you tag me. All of my information is down there below. Well, let's get right into the edit. The very first thing we're going to do is I need to correct this composition. Like I said, I shot this at a wedding. This was a moment that kind of just happened as we were walking back to the reception area. And my second shooter actually had a better angle on me. And instead of saying, hey, get out of the way or kicking her in the head and moving her so I can get a better composition, I just decided, hey, maybe I'll just crop it in post. Maybe that would be the nicer thing to do. So there we go. I put them in a third. You can see I put them in the left third here. And that just looks significantly better right off the bat. The first thing I'm going to do, give it a medium contrast curve to just lay a foundation for the edit. And as we start at the top of the basic panel, I want to add some yellow into the image. You can see here we shot this basically at the tail end of golden hour, starting to move into sunset a little bit. They're just perfectly backlit with a bunch of rim light, and it really lends itself to be much more of a yellow edit. So let's crank the temperature up a little bit and let's go to about, let's do 6250. On our exposure, I wanna drop it ever so slightly, just 0.1, great. For the contrast, we're gonna crank it up quite a bit, about plus 40 right there, I like that. For the highlights, we're pretty blown out again because we're shooting directly into the sun using only natural light. So we're going to move the highlights down quite a bit, about minus 50 or 60 here. Minus 52 is good with me. Shadows, we're going to leave the shadows where they're at, as well as the whites. Then for our blacks, we're going to come really far down on those. Let's do about minus 75 or so. Awesome. So you can see here, the edit's looking pretty terrible, but that's because we're just getting started. Just stick with me here. So let's scroll down. We're gonna go all the way down to dehaze, because as you know, some reason Adobe decided to put dehaze at the very bottom. We're gonna do plus 15, and let's go back up. So now we're on our presence portion of the basic panel. Let's bring this down quite a bit. Gonna do about minus 30. That's gonna reduce the midpoint contrast, really loosen up the edges and make things a lot less harsh. Now for our vibrance, we're really gonna bring this down quite a bit. We're gonna go about minus 50, okay? And the reason why we do that is because vibrance controls mostly the cooler parts of the image. So like your blue tones, your, your purples and magentas. And with our saturation, we want to bring that up to about plus 25 or so. And saturation is going to do just about the opposite of vibrance. It really controls a lot more of the warmer tones, things like your yellows, your oranges, things like that, which in turn lends itself to more of a film type look. And you can see just with the presence alone, we've really dramatically improved the way the edit's looking so far. So now let's really continue on the color grading here and we're gonna hit the HSL. And of that, we're gonna work directly within our saturation. With our reds, we're gonna knock out our reds pretty far down. We're gonna go about minus 50 or so. Perfect. And then with the corresponding warmer tones, we're going to make kind of a curve here. So with our orange, we're gonna bring it down to about minus 25. Perfect. With our yellows, we want to come down about minus 35. And with our greens, we want to go about minus 50, just like the way reds were. Awesome. 
And the reason why we're doing a curve here is so that we reduce the amount of harshness there is within the desaturation of these colors so that there's no heavy clipping going on. And when you're doing an edit like this, especially with people in front of a sunset, you really want to be careful with these orange and yellow sliders. And I'll show you why. I'll zoom into the image here. And if I crank down the oranges a lot, you can see here, that's pretty much the entirety of their skin tones. And you almost have like a selective color type of edit, which is something you definitely don't want to do. So let's undo that change. And we're going to go minus 25 there. Now check out where we were before we did the HSL adjustment and where we are after it. It's already looking so much better just because of that. So now again, since we're going for a film type edit, you can see here and here and kind of in their hair and things like that, the blacks are a lot more muted. So that means we're gonna give this more of a matte type finish. So in the tone curve with the medium contrast curve, I'm gonna go to the second node from the left over here. I'll double click it to remove it. Then on the node all the way to the left, we're just gonna raise that up quite a bit, right to about, let's say 9%. That looks good. And you can see in here, all of these shadows and all of these dark areas here, all of these blacks have been increased to more of a gray type area. And you can see it looks a lot like it was taken on a film camera and processed in film. Now to really seal the deal on a film edit, what you're gonna wanna do is come to your effects and then you find the big bad grain part. Because when we zoom in, you can see here, there's essentially no noise. I took this at ISO 500, as you can see. I shot this on a full frame camera, shot this at F2.8 to get some nice bokeh there, and one two hundredth of a second to make sure it was nice and sharp when I was shooting it. But we want to give this a film type look which means we don't want it to look like we use the modern camera. So in the grain portion of this effects type module here, we're gonna go to the amount slider and crank it up to about 40 or so. On the size, we're gonna go from 25 to about 15 or so. Make the individual pieces of grain a little bit smaller. And then you can see here when we zoom in, it totally looks like we didn't use an expensive modern camera. Fantastic, right? So as you guys can probably gather, I'm not a huge fan of adding grain after the fact into an image, but it does coincide with the film look. And that is the look that we're going for with this image. So really, I don't mind it all that much. And if you liked this edit, make sure that you save a preset of it so that you can use it as a foundational piece in your edits in pictures in the future. And if you downloaded the raw file and you took the picture in a completely different direction, I would love to see what you came up with. Post it on social media. Make sure you tag me so I can see it. Well, I'm James Young with jamesyoungphotography.com. And this was Teach Me How to Lightroom. Lightroom.